my family attended a Southern Baptist church when I was growing up, but um, I was sort of the dark sheep of the family. I had three older sisters and all of them were baptized, but I was not. I had no use for that sort of thing. Uh, I won't go into the details, but it was only later when I was in graduate school earning a doctorate that I came to Christ. Um, circumstances led me to ask two questions. Uh, is love not enough? And is there not enough love? And um, well, it was quite by surprise that the image that filled my mind in answer to those questions was Christ on the cross. So I suppose my Southern Baptist upbringing did me no harm. Uh, something must have entered my mind, uh, but it came to life then. And I had two thoughts. The first was, this was going to change my life, this understanding that of Christ on the cross. Uh, and the second was, oh my gosh, does that mean I have to call myself a Christian? Um, but the Lord was good. Um, and uh, I started to go to church and, and learn that my worst fears about Christianity were were sort of a cartoon of my own devising. And uh, I discovered that the community of faith was a community that had integrity, that could face real issues. And so that sort of got me off um, flashing forward um, through the years. Uh, I've just been very blessed by the my where that journey has led to England when I did a postdoc and worshiped at All Souls, to New York as a scientist at Cold Spring Harbor, uh, to Boston as a professor at MIT, and then for most of my career uh, in, in Nashville, where I was a professor at Vanderbilt University. So we moved to Salem to be near our grandchildren and our daughter and her husband and uh, that's what we did when I retired in 2018. Um, of course, the pandemic hit. And it was kind of a spiritual dry time. Uh, but I discovered Salem as uh, part of the men's group. Um, I'd been going to an Episcopal church. My wife and I had been going to an Episcopal church. And through a member of that church, we had been going to, I'd been going to the men's group and of course met Father Dave and um, I don't know, there's just something about him and, and the other people there um, that impressed me enough that we visited at Salem and um, were struck by, um, for one thing, it's a very, um, generous community, I think was the word. Uh, everywhere there were signs of, of generosity and of course people were very welcoming. And another thing that really struck us was, I, I had been very impressed by Father, Pastor uh, Dave, but also um, I guess Sarah was the associate at the time. And of course, when she was replaced by Pastor Carolyn, um, these, these are phenomenal people uh, in my mind. And it, it, a very nurturing leadership. And uh, so that's the second thing is that Salem is a very nurturing place. Um, my wife has celiac disease. And one thing that really hit us early was that when we came forth for communion the first time, without having to ask, Pastor Dave opened the, the vessel with gluten-free wafers. And it, you know, it was such a small thing, and yet um, it was it was just done as a matter of course. And it was a very powerful moment for us. And since 
attending Salem, we've just been very impressed by the generosity, uh, the spirit of of, uh, of just openness, and, um, and so we're very pleased. I'm very pleased to share those impressions with you. That, um, this is indeed a very special place.